Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the caucus meeting of the Englewood Cliffs Mayor and Council. Today is November 8th, 2018. It's 6.35 p.m. Call the meeting to order. Madam Clerk, have a roll call. Mayor Franja. Here. Council Person Zaversa. Here. E. Park. Here. O. O'Shea. Yes. M. Park. No. Wu. Yeah. Borough Attorney. Present. Borough Administrator. Present. Public Works Superintendent. Present. Borough. Everyone's present. Mayor and staff. Council moving up. Thank you. Um, Madam Clerk, would you please read into the record the Open Public Meetings Act statement? Adequate notice of this meeting was given to the press and posted as required. Dame time. And posted as required. Date and time of this meeting was legally given as required by the Open Public Meetings Act. This notice is on file with the municipal clerk and posted on the bulletin board. Minutes of this meeting will be made available to the public upon the completion of typing and proofreading by the municipal clerk. Thank you. Uh, we changed the order a bit because I wanted to have the new business uh, up front so that the public could comment and we go into closed session. The first thing up is uh, the one. Before you go yeah. here, Mayor, I have item number eight to add, which is just a uh, notation about the press best practices inventory for next month. Okay, the first thing up is uh, I wanted to select a date for a special meeting at the end of November uh, for a closed session. Uh, negotiation with officer in charge, Lieutenant David Hill, uh, and any other potential matters. Officer Hill has been in charge for um, just about a month. And October 11th. A, October 11th now, and um, I just wanted to have an opportunity for mayor and council to, to sit with him and um, get to know him a bit better. I've gotten to know him over the last month. I think he's doing a uh, fantastic job in uh, difficult circumstances. Um, very proud of how he's taken over and um, uh, boosted uh, morale and also um, discipline uh, in the uh, Englewood Cliffs Police Department. So with that said, I was going to propose November 29th at uh, 8 p.m. If that works for everyone, can you check your calendars, please? You know? Uh, 29th. Um, okay, well, how about the 27th? <coughs> or 29th during the day? <laughs> All right, does the 27th work? Good evening. Which one is going to do? 27th. It's early this year. 27th, everyone? Is that okay? I'm sorry? Um, okay, well, we could. I would have, Ellen, you were good. William, you're a good. Mark, are you good on the 27th? Okay. Um, Ed, were you available that week? Um, about 28th. Right, 28th. Mark, are you good on 28th? What day? 28th. Yes, I'm okay now. Okay. All right, so let's do um, November 28th at 8 p.m. It's subject to um, Lieutenant Hill's availability as well. Uh, yes, we'll, we'll go with the closed session now. Uh, next thing up was I want to create an ad hoc committee uh, for affordable housing, um, just to assist with the um, with the the workload that's coming in now and get the council more involved, along with uh, people who have special knowledge of uh, the last 12 months of what's happened and, and where we stand. Uh, so I'll be proposing that, I guess. Uh, uh, I'd like to speak on this. Should I do that at the regular meeting? Well, let, let me lay the groundwork because okay. I did not 
draft the resolution yet. Well, it's not a resolution. I'm just no, no, there's a resolution that is the creation of an ad hoc committee. Right, but the mayor is doing this. The appointment is on the agenda. That's correct. Right, but that's without consent of the council. Yeah, right. it doesn't need to be with consent of council. So the, an ad hoc committee is sort of an informal committee. Uh, they uh, they will not have meetings. There will not, not be open public meetings. They will not have meetings. They're generally not subject to Oprah. When they're not expected to produce any paperwork that would be subject to Oprah. But if they do, of course, we would look at it at that time. What I'm uh, proposing to you guys is three members. Uh, and I suggested the borough um, administrator as one of those members because then that makes sure that there's a contact person within the borough. I suggested a citizen and then I suggested a council member. So if any of you are interested, the mayor does want to make those appointments tonight. But for the resolution for creating, I am suggesting a citizen, the borough administrator, and a council member. You don't put names into the resolution, okay? Uh, again, th this would be the duties that would be expected. Uh, liaison between the council, the litigation council, or any of the affordable housing council, and the mayor and council. So when the uh, affordable housing lawyer has questions, they can address it to one of those three ad hoc members, and the ad hoc member can communicate it communicated to the mayor and council or if the ad hoc member happens to be your borough administrator that's fine so they would be act as a liaison between the the attorneys and the mayor and council in addition assist the council where necessary in gathering documents that are open public records in providing uh, past information that may be necessary for the litigation that's coming up or in settlement negotiations, anything like that. So assist the assigned attorneys. Also expected to report to the mayor and council orally, whether it be in closed, if appropriate, or in open session. But to regularly report to the mayor and council what the, the activities of the litigation lawyers are that we need to know. Of course, the litigation lawyers they can, any, they can also come to closed session. We don't necessarily need the ad hoc member. But it, for those periods of times where you need that, you will then have three different members that could come to the mayor and council and report. Um, it would be um, such other duties as, as are related to that, but no decision making will be made by the ad hoc committee or by any individual member, because decision making is reserved for the mayor and council. Well, can I just finish laying the groundwork and then we can have a discussion. In addition, an ad hoc committee is, is, is created for the purpose of a, a singular task. In this scenario, the task is uh, the litigation entitled N. Ray Borough of Englewood Cliffs regarding affordable housing. That's the litigation that we are talking about. And the ad hoc committee will serve until the task is completed. So I'm expecting that if there is a trial or a settlement or an appeal after either of those things might occur, that the ad hoc committee would continue its duties. So that's your basic scenario for the ad hoc committee. And that's the proposed resolution that I have not yet drafted. So now discussion. That sounds good. Okay. We're going to have people, so we have someone on this council. The only thing we yelled at all the time how it's private, privileged, can't outside, confidential, and now we have somebody outside this council. What's wrong with the council? We have six people. Uh huh. Right. Why all of a sudden wasn't changed when we had to call it eight? Okay, one at a time. Why would we need an outside committee for that? We have six qualified people here. We're certainly confident enough to handle that. Well, well, if history predicts the future, the six here are are not going to do all the work uh, that's needed to be done, and quite frankly, there's. 
there are people here who are much more versed than, than you and, and I, Ed, in terms of what's happened over the last year. They're not on the council. Are, this is critical. No, but I, I'm a... It's all right. They'd be subject to... No, no, you're, you're missing the point. There's two issues. There's getting the work done and then being confidential about the work. The confidentiality, I don't have a problem with. They're all subject to confidentiality. Uh, and, and subject the, to fiduci the resolution will provide. It sounds like you guys already have yeah, ten people that are working on that. Well, our, our, I did. Uh, you're one of them, Gloria, Ellen, and you're one of them. Well, you know, I'm opposed to. Have you don't want to be on a committee. I want to be on the committee. You should be on the committee. Yeah. So we'll, we'll put you on. Well, you're not going to do the work if history predicts the future. You know what? Point that Carol Cow quit. That's the end of the story. Now put the committee up. Why now change things? Exactly. You're, you, you're, you're jumping at this without even knowing all the facts of who would be appointed. Okay, well, okay. You know what? Now you're going to go around the board and more liability. Yeah, all right. Well, that's, I'm just stating what, what's going to happen tonight. And then, um, well, the other thing is, you cannot, this is a complete waste of time, too, because all, all uh, ad hoc committees, all committees are going to be. Uh, we have a by the end of the year. We, we, so, we have a trial in January. I'm sorry. That was your ordinance back in 2016, dissolving all uh, committees. No, I'm, not I'm telling you that we, we need to get work done this year. But you're, you can't do that. Se separate separate your, your dislike of everything from the actual requirement that we have to get work done. Why don't okay? you just call it what it is, Mario? What? Okay? What do you want to call it? Instead of appointing somebody else, now you're trying to put your own people there, there are, No, Come on. the two of you are not my people for sure, but I want you on that committee. Exactly. Could you that, that was the case, you would have pointed us before. We don't need an okay. 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 You're going to do the work? Yeah. You're going to do the work? Really? You can't even get to a meeting on time. All right. All right, let's go. So the next thing is um, Whitty Field repairs and renovation. Um, look, this, this is coming back. This, this is coming back. It's all on video. Don't worry. Um, it, it, I know you'll, you'll put a collage together. You'll set it to the town. You'll, you'll put nice music. That I had nothing to do with anything. Uh, all I know is that my, my image and likeness was spread all over town with uh, my I guess the, 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 the best of Mario hits, right? So okay, all right. Move on. So Whitty Field repairs. Um, I don't care what you all say. We're going to do something uh, next year. Uh, the, the, the children of this town want the field fixed. They want the park fixed. The parents want it. Uh, this is not a political issue. Don't make it that. Uh, there's in, immediately there's some repairs that need to be done for the opening day. Let me finish. Let me finish speaking. The, the, the infield of the Little League field needs to be uh, fixed. That's about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. I met with the Little League board about this. They, they they told me what's been happening. There's been a lot of bad hops. The balls are hitting kids in the head, in the face, um, in the back of the head, in the shoulder, the leg. Uh, uh, you you need to talk when you're asked to talk or when you're recognized. Um, so then the other thing we want to do is um, what I want to do, and I'm hoping you'll join me, is renovate. We, we need new fields, we need a band shell, we need pavilions, we need lights, we need at least one, I don't care how big it is, but one little patch of turf. So at least after it rains, we could still have kids play. Um, it doesn't have to be big, but just something where kids could just run around. And, um, you know, that, that's what we're expected uh, to be doing here for the town. We're a disgrace in terms of athletic facilities and parks, uh, not only the rest of the county, but the rest of the state. Uh, impoverished areas of the state have better facilities than we have, and, and it's just not—it's just not um, acceptable. So that's one one thing that I really want to push forward. Next thing, very important. Uh, I mean, I met with the school board back in September. There's been uh, concern about uh, school safety. I won't get into any specifics, but uh, we are going to have a request for. Um, an armed uh, <coughs> school security officer. Um, my desire, and they agree with me, is that it be part of the um, the person be part of the Anglo Cliffs Police Department. What we're contemplating doing there is um, hiring at least two new police officers. Um, who and all of our police officers that will be trained for school safety will rotate people through each school during the school year. The rest of the time, those officers will be out on patrol. 
Uh, th that's big picture. The finances haven't been discussed yet, but um, you know what, what I would want to do there, um, and you know what the school would want to do there. So we'll have to find a compromise on finances. But uh, this is something that they asked for. Jennifer Brower sent me. I don't think I got this as a public statement that we received um, from the school board. Uh, explain it. Yeah, that's what you're asking me for. Uh, everybody got it yesterday. Yesterday. It was sent yesterday. No, no, you keep it. Is it dated? It's not dated, but it, I received it yesterday. And it was after their last, um, I guess they had a school board meeting last week or this week, I'm not sure. So the, the thought was of having armed security. They, they talked about a lot of different options. My view is that if anyone's going to carry a gun in a law enforcement capacity in Englewood Cliffs, it should all be done through the Englewood Cliffs Police Department, no one else. Um, Chief Chaffee and I attended that meeting together back on September 5th. And I, I believe we were in agreement on this. Uh, next issue, traffic issues. Um, trying to figure out the, the impact of LG's new building on, the, on residents, especially on Van Ostrand. Um, Andy Hippolyte was working with their engineer to provide some um, relief in terms of people living on Van Ostrand being able to head north without having to make a left on Hudson Terrace. So I'll have more to report on that at the next meeting. And also uh, try, trying to work out something with the Palisade Interstate Parkway to finally and uh, finally create that, on, well, I guess it would be an on-ramp uh, close to CNBC there so people could just get out of the middle of our town and just jump on the highway, which is where they're going anyway. The old, that, uh, yeah, so that's the thought. Uh, next up is a discussion of disciplinary. Mayor, yeah. Before you start, I'm going to come off the, uh, off the table. That's fine. I don't want to be part of it. Um, Thank you, Lisa. Do you want to, Emily, do you want to handle that? Yes. So, uh, no, so that's the first order of business that we'll talk about. And you'll have to let me uh, speak in order, and then there will be a discussion. Uh, first off, uh, I'll let you know that I did speak with Lizette before about her uh, vacating to the table, and later on when there is a resolution, her leaving the day, and that's an appropriate way to handle it. Secondly, there is no rice notice requirement. There is a recent case by the Supreme Court entitled uh, Kane, uh, Kane, or Kane Teachers versus Morrell. It is a Supreme Court decision. It was decided in June. I was uh, aware of the appellate division decision and the lower court decision. The Supreme Court overruled, excuse me, let, okay, so let me finish. The Supreme Court overruled the appellate division, and the decision was that there was no rights notice necessary when you are discussing something in open public session, and that is what we are doing now. If there were deliberations in closed session, there is still no rights notice required because you are allowed to deliberate in closed session under the Open Public Meetings Act. You are allowed to have closed sessions with your attorney for advisory, consultative, and, and deliberative uh, without a rights notice because you are deliberating. In addition, so that has been the decision that there was no rights notice served upon uh, Ms. Duffy with respect to this matter. Now, despite the fact that we are in open public session, we are still being careful not to discuss personnel information of a personal nature. You have all received a copy of um, a list of uh, potential specifications and potential charges. That is a working document. It is for you to discuss and it is for the attorneys thereafter if it is approved, if, if charges are desired to be preferred. The working document is not subject to Oprah and it will be revised into a set of charges and specifications if that is approved. Uh, before we begin on the content of the charges and specifications, again, I want to warn you that we should not be discussing details about this. The relief, the resolution will seek to prepare and serve the charges upon 
Lizette Duffy and submit to the DCA briefly. She is a tenured clerk. At the time some of these charges occurred, she was also the borough administrator. Uh, all tenured clerks' disciplinary matters are dealt with through the Department of Community Affairs who may or may not send it to the Office of Administrative Law. They decide. So there's no decision making by the governing body on uh, the charges themselves, the outcome of the charges. You do make the decision to prefer the charges and you do make the decision as to what discipline penalty you may want to seek from the charges, but you do not make the decision as to sustaining the specifications or imposing the penalty. Department of Community Affairs does that. Just to be clear, rather than prefer, it's proper. No, it's prefer. Really? It, it's for preferring disciplinary okay. charges. But mm -hmm. in, in any event, proper is when you're making uh, right. nice. proper of evidence. This is nice. prefer charges. It just means uh, uh, bringing charges to the DCA. Um, I do want to reiterate, and I have talked with this uh, with uh, certain council members. There is an issue of conflict of interest. If you read my confidential working documents sent today, you will see that in, in specifications under paragraph C, there is a tape recording and there is a discussion which involves both Councilman Ed Aversa and Councilwoman Gloria O. And as a result of that conversation, Councilwoman Gloria O did in fact take some action in an open public meeting. These are not charges against either of you. Uh, today. Okay. Would you like a copy? Did you not see that? Okay. The other council members did print their own copies, but here is the copy for you. And Councilwoman O, oh, that's for you. That is a confidential document, and again, working document. Please do not distribute that to anyone, including the borough clerk. Okay. Um, the conflict of interest is um, apparent for re with respect to Councilwoman O and Councilwoman Councilman Aversa with respect to Section B, and uh, that is my opinion. And I respectfully request that the two of you recuse with respect to that charge. In addition. Uh, there are charges in Section A having to do with the draft minutes prepared by the borough clerk recently for the recent council meeting of October 10, 2018. And you can see the uh, specifications with respect to that. And I am, uh, I am concerned and express that there may be a conflict of interest for those who were involved in the making of the attempted motion and attempted uh, second of the motion to dismiss all charges against Chief Chiaffi. I believe that, okay, uh, with respect to Section A and the, minute, the draft minutes of October 10, 2018, there are charges preferred, uh, proposed with respect to the borough clerk with respect to how those draft minutes read and the actions she took in distributing those draft minutes. I believe that Councilwoman O, Councilman Aversa, and Councilwoman Ellen Park are conflicted, conflict of interest, because you were involved in the motion and second, and there was no vote taken on those motions. Hold on. There was no vote taken on those motions, and I believe that it's fairly reasonable to assume that since you were involved in the underlying action, you have a conflict of interest with respect to making a, excuse me, making a decision as to whether charges, charges should be preferred. If you choose not to recuse on that section A or on that section B, I believe that your failure to recuse may be challenged. It is certainly not up to me to require you to recuse, but I am giving you my opinion. Yes. 
And let me finish. Is this because I made a motion to vote on uh, I'm saying a, a lot more than that. I think she's saying I'm that. Saying a lot more than that. It was choreographed with you. Uh, but I understand on information and belief that, that you're also a dentist that practices and here in town, and you're also you're also Lizette Duffy's dentist. So you have a you have a financial interest okay, in it. So you have a financial interest. Mayor, please let me. Okay. No, no, it's not funny. This is ser- this, this is a serious matter. No. Okay. Exactly. You, you have a you you. you you, 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 you all create you all create your own conflicts, okay? Why is it that for the whole time that she's been the attorney that she's never raised conflict issues for you and him and Because I don't have any. Because I don't have any. That is not true. Judge Order, that Carol should not be voting. This meeting it's probably hard for y'all yeah. to believe this, but this meeting is not about Carol. Okay, excuse me. Excuse me. There, there, I need to just make a record. I understand. I understand. Okay, I am, sir. Order. I am giving my opinion. Sir, I am giving my opinion. Order. And I told this, I indicated this before, so I discussed the, the conflict between Ed and Ed and Gloria with respect to Section B, I've discussed the conflict of the three of you, Ellen, Ed, and Gloria with respect to Section A. I am also going to state that if there is an attorney, if there is a doctor-patient relationship, it inevitably involves a financial remuneration, and that is the most serious of conflicts of interest, and it is by, I, I don't know because Councilman, uh, Councilman Aversa will not tell us, but if a doctor-patient relationship existed between Councilman Aversa and Lizette Duffy, that is a conflict of interest of the most serious kind. That's all I'm saying, and I believe if that exists or existed, you should recuse Councilman Aversa on anything having to do with Lizette Duffy. Now, respectfully, I have opined on conflicts of interest with respect to Republican members, and there is no court order that ordered Carol McMorrow not to vote. There is a so consent. Order, excuse me. Right, a sole order stipulation, which has the same okay, amount. Okay, please. Order. You're interrupting me. Order. You're, I'm, you're characterizing order. it improperly. No, that's not true. And it, order. Yes, you are. It is a consent order entered in a litigation for a very specific period of time and a very specific person, Chief Chiaffi. So there was, and, and by the way, before that consent order, there was never a time where Carol McMorrow voted on Chief Chiaffi. Really? During, it wouldn't matter she voted on, right? Uh, yes. But that's not about right. Chief Chiaffi, yes, right? It is. No, it's about, it's allegations as, as to the three of you. And by the way, no. she didn't vote on anything having to do you know with what? The, we'll, we'll, the East we'll wouldn't matter. Right. All I, I, they did, all they did was appoint counsel for council members. That's not a conflict of interest. It's definitely a conflict of okay. interest. Let's just bring, let's, let's, let's do this. Let's let you finish. Anyway, those are the preliminary discussions with respect to Item number six on new businesses, new business for caucus. The second matter is to look at the specifics without disclosing confidential personnel information that are itemized in the document sent to you today. Again, a working document that is confidential. There are four sections. The first section, and I'm just going to read the, the title of the section, specifications with respect to multiple specifications with respect to draft minutes of the regular meeting of the governing body held on October 10, 2018. Section B, specifications multiple regarding tape 78 made by Chief Chiaki in the office of the borough clerk. At least part of that tape was in the office of the borough clerk. There were multiple conversations occurring on this tape at different times and places. Section B has to do with with one particular conversation, and that is the one that discusses Ed, Eddie, and Gloria. So you can see that specification. 
Section C is specifications multiple about release of confidential documents. And you can see what I am talking about. Chief Giaffi uh, obtained some confidential unredacted documents. We know this because Chief Chiaki gave those confidential documents in his paper discovery in his own litigation. One of them is the document that the chief and the clerk are discussing in tape 78 in section B of this working set of document of charges. <clears throat> section D specifications multiple for other multiple recorded conversations between Chief Chiaffi and the borough clerk. Some of those conversations are instituted by the clerk herself rather than the chief. Some of those conversations are led by the clerk rather than the chief. Uh, and all of them have to do with topics as I list there, I'm not going to state, but as I list there, that are uh, potentially against the interests of the borough and causing financial um, uh, financial uh, damage to the borough. All of these are potential. No decision is being made today as to sustaining or not sustaining these charges. We are merely looking at whether or not the charges should be brought, served, and sent to the um, DCF. The last section of the document, working document given to you today, tells you under what, under what authority the charges can be made of the specifications. There are violations uh, alleged as to borough code provisions, as to state statutes, as to borough personnel policy manual provisions, breach of fiduciary duties, breach of confidentiality duties, breach of the clerk's oath of office, breach of the administrator's oath of office for the ones where she was actually the administrator as well as the clerk, breach of clerk's duties under the clerk's desk reference code, and breach of Robert's rules of order in preparation of the minutes and uh, uh, in, in section A. Again, these are potential charges and potential specifications. I am not saying or, or recommending or asking the council to make any decision on the validity or invalidity of the charges. I am not asking the council, I'm not presenting this to the council rather, uh, for you to make a decision. The proposed resolution is for preparation and service of charges as to Lizette Duffy and submission of same to the Department of Community Affairs. The, the charges are outlined for you here, but will be filled in with more detail in the actual charging document. It, this may not be the be end in all of what the ultimate result would be. The Labor Council was consulted on this. Uh, special Labor Council. Oh. Okay, no, I'm not asking. You're, you're not listening to me. Expanding the charging document, the char charging document will expand with factual information from what you have here. You have a complete set of information here to act to vote for preparation and service of charges and submission of same to the Department of Community Affairs. That's the only decision making you need to make based upon what is here. Of course, no, no, this is not horses before the cart. This is the appropriate process that we are following. You all will have a vote. If you believe the process is improper, you can state that in your vote. We are following due process. We are following the rights requirements, and we are following the uh, uh, obligation to maintain confidentiality of personal rec personal records. One other thing, uh, the council members that did take the time to come and listen to tapes were Mary O'Shea and Councilman Park. They did listen to tape 78, at yeah. least part of it. 
and uh, certainly uh, with respect to that they have additional knowledge that I have not provided to you but certainly there are there have been many opportunities for listening to the okay the tape cannot the tape can you know that the tape cannot be given to you right I tried to many to schedule okay. with you and including tomorrow morning when Ed has apparently made an appointment with you at 10 a.m. and now you're like sorry no I can't, I can't do it okay. now I can't move any okay. far okay. you're okay. mischaracterizing you're okay. supposed to read the email okay? yes you can yeah. go, go ahead okay. actually because I read him as Ed well actually didn't give me a time for his requested meeting on Friday tomorrow until today you didn't actually say morning. You said Friday. But regardless, it doesn't matter. I didn't hear from any of you again yesterday, today, and today for tomorrow. I understand. You asked me two days ago or yesterday. No, no. You asked me yesterday. Can I come on Friday? Ed asked me a week and a half. I asked you last week if I can come okay. on yeah. another day. You asked me morning. for election day. I right. had other obligations already set. Right. And I asked you if I could do the Friday before. And you said, sorry, it was too much short notice, right? Because so that, that was don't say that we didn't try. Okay. Well, why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? Before you leave tonight. Months. Hold on, hold on. You could listen to the tape. Why, why don't you do this? T t tonight, time. before you leave tonight, yeah. figure out a day and a time that you could all show up and listen to these, okay? Because, quite frankly, the public is looking at you saying, like, what is wrong with these people? Can't you figure out? Let's work it out. Let's work it out. Let's it, don't, those little sound bites don't get you anywhere because, quite frankly, I read those emails and Amory is 100% right. Are, are you done with your presentation? I'm done with my presentation okay. on, on Lizette. This okay. is a discussion period now, okay? There will be a resolution made orally, a motion made orally, presumably, if it gets seconded, there will then be a roll call and a vote. And I've told you what the resolution will be. I'll repeat it. Preparation and service of charges and submission to the DCA. And, and, and the discussion period is now. So there you go. Yes. So, so regarding the, the rice thing, yes. I think my understanding of that thing was, was a few months ago, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Was, was it supposed to be for a group, not an individual? Uh huh. So how does that apply to an individual? Well, the that that's the way I do it. Okay, I understand. That I have. Yes, I understand. I have a difference of opinion, and I've gone over it with um, the um, uh, labor attorney as well. And the uh, decision is pretty broad. If you're doing something in open public meeting, you don't need to give a rights notice. And that's all we're doing here. That's why we're not enclosed. So just, just everyone should, everyone should bear in mind that you know all our employees have fiduciary duties to the borough. The recordings that are referenced, and this is for the public's benefit, uh, the recordings that are referenced were made by Chief Chaffee. No one at this table made those recordings. Chief Chaffee made those recordings. Uh, now, some people on those recordings knew they were being recorded. Others didn't. Um, Amory listed 38 data points in her presentation and nine governing laws, rules, oaths, and policies. Um, again, we are not judging. We are just referring or pre preferring on uh, to the ent governmental entity that does the judging. Okay? Is that accurate? Yes. No, I didn't count the data points. I just counted them. <laughs> Approximately 38. Okay. okay. All right. Um, let me just make a note. I'm done with item number six. Okay. At the point in the, um, in the resolutions where we will entertain that, which I believe is uh, resolution... Number 251, Lizette will come off the dais. The vote will be called. I will record the vote. And um, the, the title is amended to say, authorize the preparation and service of the charges. That's the title to resolution 251. Okay, it's in there. No, it says preparation and submission. Okay. I, no, preparation and service of charges and then submission. 
Uh, they're in the data points. Okay. No, they're not accurate. No, they're, 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 they're not accurate. They're, they're wrong. And, and it's, it's in that document. I mean, basically, and this is not a breach of confidentiality. Right. Right. So they, these are draft minutes. They've not been approved yet, obviously. But uh, they're, they're, the document that I gave you does itemize the things that are in there. Yes. The working document that I've given you for consideration of the limited motion that we are doing today. Whether or not the characterization as, as in the minutes is not for your decision. That is part of the charges to the DCA. There is an audio tape of the mayor and council meeting of October 10th, 2018. And the draft minutes do not comport with what the audio tape actually shows. And, and there are many reasons. There were many reasons why the motion that was made and seconded was in it. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong, but the fact that it happened. It's on video, and now you're trying to interpret it. Oh, yes, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm not interpreting. No, no, no. Order, order. One, one at a time. One, one at a time. Everybody has the floor. I am not. I, first of all, I am not doing anything. I'm merely listing. I'm merely listing the facts, number one. Number two, I am not mischaracterizing from what is in the audio. The fact of the matter is no vote occurred. The motion was not recognized. There was a motion and a second, and no vote occurred. Period. No. I am sorry. There was sir. no there was no roll call the asked for by the mayor. Judy, we, ad we adjourned the meeting. The meeting. We the, the meeting was adjourned. Okay. We had what, uh, time out. Time out. It has nothing to do with the adjournment of the meeting. It has to do with the fact that the motion and the second is not a vote. And the motion itself was defective under many reasons. However, we are not here to decide whether the motion was improper or not. The charge that you are entertaining is whether or not the draft minutes properly characterize what occurred. There was no vote. And there was no call for, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. You can read Robert's rules and know what a vote is. A vote okay. is not, a motion and a second occurred. Just, That's all I'm telling you. It's not biased. Condemn We're not condemning anyone. We're not condemning anyone. Whoever up on charge or whatever you want to call this is, is to me not fair only because there, we did call. We did? I don't know. And that's what the minutes reflect. Whether it was adequate or not is. is that's not what well, the minutes well, reflect. Yes, but okay. No. Okay, here, here, not up to us. Here's the thing that your, 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 your motion wasn't even on the agenda. The public didn't have a chance to comment on it. It was improper. It wasn't recognized. There was no vote taken. I understand, I understand what you're saying. And, right. you, you, and by the way, you'll, you'll also have the opportunity to answer those questions um, okay. as a sworn witness. Okay. You don't have to threaten me, Mary. That's not a threat. You'll have the opportunity. You'll, you'll have the opportunity. That's okay. You'll have your opportunity. You'll, you'll have a Bible to swear on. All right. So if we're done with item number six, Borough Clerk can come back to the Okay, the table. next next one up was um, discussion of disciplinary charges dated November 20th, 2017, and hearing officer's report of recommendations as to Michael Chaffee for insubordination in failing to follow a directive to use accumulated time benefits. And we'll follow this by a closed session deliberation. That's Anything correct. else? No. Uh, yes, I need to make a record. Uh, again, there was no right notice to Chief Chiaffi. Uh, the letter that the mayor issued was dated May 7, 2017. It directed um, use of accumulated time by Chief Chiaffi as of the next day. Chief Chiaffi did not 
comply with that letter. Charges were brought dated November 20, 2017, and a decision has been made, a recommendation has been made by, by the hearing officer, Alan Roth. There was no testimony in this case. The hearing officer determined and the parties agreed that it was a legal issue. So he took briefing, he had the correspondence and the positions of the party parties, and it was submitted on the papers and a decision was reached. You had that decision. You've had it for a long time. It was issued circa April 9, 2018, and it finds a certain penalty. It finds that the charges should be sustained and that recommends and that there should be a penalty imposed that's recommended. From here, we've done this before. Procedurally, we are in an open session where we are discussing that what we will deliberate about, not we, because I don't say during deliberations, what you will deliberate about in closed session. It is on the closed session agenda, item number six of the closed session. So right now, all I'm telling you is we know what we're going to be discussing. The purpose of your closed session will be to have attorney advice on how the format of your deliberation should be, and your decision-making process will come out. We'll deliberate inside. You guys are going to debate it and deliberate inside. You should be determining two things based upon the recommendations. Should the charges be sustained, and what should be the penalty if they are sustained? So your resolution will be, just like we did once before with Chief Chiaffi, accept, reject, or modify the hearing officer's recommendations. Amory? Yes. Can we go into closed session now? Is there somebody here that we need to talk to in closed session? Mayor. Do we have to open to the public first? Hold on. Yes, you do. You have to open to the public. So first? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I understand that someone's here, and you'll have to be just as patient. I'm done with item number seven. I think everyone understands we've been through this process before. Does anyone have any questions before you do entertain your deliberations in closed on item number seven? Okay. I have a legal question, but should it be out here or should it be in here? Legal. I'm going to go in for advisory, and then I'm going to leave when you have deliberations, so wait until inside for legal. Okay. For Councilwoman O's advice, you know, I'm just telling you, we added item number eight, which is a notation on the best practices inventory of the borough. It is being finalized. It will be distributed to all of you for review. You are required to discuss it at an open public meeting. It will be on the agenda in December. So I'm making a notation now. The clerk has a resolution already prepared, and your discussion will occur in December, and you will have a resolution. Also, Councilwoman O, a special meeting was set for item number one in our new business discussion tonight. The special meeting is Wednesday, November 28th. Mayor, I believe you said 8.30 p.m.? 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock p.m.? You are late to the meeting. Yeah, it's Wednesday, November 28th at 8 p.m. That's it for the new business. Mayor, you do have to do a public portion. Okay. Can I have a motion to open to the public? Second. All in favor? Aye. If there's anyone from the public who wishes to be heard, please let me recognize you. I recognize you. Come up to the microphone, state your name and address, and tell us what's on your mind. Lauren Eastwood, 4 Willow Drive. I have several points that I want to make concerning the discussion so far. No one on the Democratic side has discussed with ECRO any of the campaign advertisements, and no one on the Democratic side has discussed with CTE any of the Republican campaign advertisements, social media postings, anything. So at the very best, Councilwoman Ellen Park had no basis whatsoever for making an accusation that the mayor was involved 
in the decision-making process on the social media, and at the worst, she intentionally lied. And you can wipe the stupid smirk off. I go, with, I go with the former and the latter. Um, so, uh, Thank you for, for really coming out and being uh, who you are. Thank you. Well, she's right. Yeah, yeah Laura's right. Um, so we are crystal clear. Mm -hmm. The mayor had absolutely no role in the preparation of the advertisements for either ECRO or CTE. In fact, the mayor first found out that ECRO was doing a social media campaign five minutes after the first advertisement was released to the public when I called him to tell him that he would be seeing it. He had no knowledge of the content prior to the uh, advertising events being released and no involvement. Uh, and I would be very, very careful about making those allegations because... Coming from you who mailed letters to people in town and denied it, right? I have not yes. denied it. You know, I'm going to send all those... The envelopes that you sent to people yeah. in town. Can we copy the, 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 the council is not to harass the residents. Yeah. Okay. This is very incredible, Lauren. You are not very credible. You're, yeah, okay. you're I'm going to do that. I will send those can, letters. Can, can you stop? Please do. Please yeah. stop. Okay. Ellen, right Ellen please, me permission. please control yourself. Yeah. Please. I will be sending out yeah. and taking an advertisement in the Korean press the, to put the court order that we that ordered that the three of you couldn't vote because of a conflict of interest. Sure. Uh, that, the Korean press isn't taking anyone's advertising. They've got problems. Okay. Uh, and thank you for thank you for putting on tape uh, that the uh, Korean press is selectively accepting advertising. Um, I appreciate yeah. that. Yes, I'm going to send everybody's video of you just saying what you just said to all the Korean people um, down. Can, can can you stop, please? Don't harass it's the resident. We're, we're, he, we're, 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 yeah, we're, we're, we're here. We're here. We are here to listen. Yeah. Yeah. We, we are here to listen. We are here to listen. Business. Council members, you can't silence a member of the public. But you will no, no, I'm sorry. No, no, no. We, she I, has a I've been called amendment. much worse. It's a First Amendment right to speak. Yeah. With respect to council members, respectfully, all, all I think the mayor is asking for <coughs> is decorum. He's not telling you not to speak or to respond to the citizen. It's decorum that we're asking about rather than threats to the citizen. That's it. That's it, Councilwoman Park. No, no one's telling you not to speak. Just the way you're doing it and decorum <laughs> would like to be uh, heard. Thank you. Um, number two, the only council members who have been subject to an order, not a stipulation, a so worded stipulation, an actual order decided on a, by a judge, uh, not a stipulation, uh, that they couldn't vote because they had a conflict of interest, were Councilwoman Gloria O, Councilwoman Ellen Park, and Councilman Edward Aversa. And that decision was handed down by Judge Christine Farrington. So we are crystal clear on who got the order. Number three. I find it very amusing to watch the three of you worry about conflicts. When the last time you were in control, you didn't worry about that at all. It should have concerned you greatly that Joe Parisi was involved in any discussions involving Boswell Engineering, since he and Stephen Boswell are business partners in Connect One Bank. But you never bothered with that. Should have concerned you greatly that Joe Parisi was involved in any discussions with the Englewood Library because Frank Huddle and Joe Parisi are business partners in Connect One Bank. It should have concerned you greatly when your borough attorney was representing... Not me. A, not you. Carter Carson. So we're crystal clear on who I'm talking about. Carter Carson was representing Blanche Binder, Binder and her husband in uh, the B.B. Khan lawsuit because the borough had a potential third-party claim against the Binders, which was never asserted, probably because Carter was representing the Binders. Um, finally, I would like to remind the council that you are in possession of a letter indicating issues that I had with prior minutes. Thank you. Anyone else from the public wishing to be heard? Yes. Can I say something? Just so to be 
clear. I was never on council when Joe Burry's was in there. Carol McMorrow, 49 Summit Street. <laughs> We're not even 48 hours past an election. And you guys, I don't, I don't know if you understand how bad you look. This is an embarrassment. Ellen, you're laughing. Gloria, you're shaking it. I'm Obviously sitting. The people have spoken and they disagree. Yeah. So you know, whatever you say, okay. just say it. That's all. That's fine. So, yeah. I, I was, I was, I wasn't going in that direction. My point was that. We're not even 48 hours past an election, and you guys haven't learned anything on how to treat people and how to speak, okay? And I would not, uh, by the way, Ellen, I was not going to go in that direction. The town did speak, and they're right down the middle. I hate to break it to you. It's about a 30-40 vote win. Nothing to brag about. Okay? So nothing to brag about. Excuse me. Don't, please. I want, I'm up here being respectful. You need to learn some manners. Please. You're an elected official. And please act like one. I'm sitting back there and watching you. And you're fighting over things that you shouldn't be fighting about. You are here to serve the public and the residents. And now the residents that just voted you guys into power and you're fighting like children I can't understand for the life of me why you continually want to attack me when I am not on the council any longer Ellen I do not I never voted on anything that I had a conflict on I did not have a court order by a judge that made a dissent decision. It was a consent order. And we settled because I wanted to stop the spending of frivolous litigation taxpayer money caused by your three Democratic operatives. I have never voted on anything having to do with Chief Chaffee. There was no necessity for that lawsuit. But your Democratic operatives felt the need to harass me and bring that lawsuit and waste the taxpayers' money so you can then advertise it in your campaign. We'll talk about it th that at the regular meeting. But I do want to remind you of what you ran on on your campaign. It says, be respectful of all residents regardless. Okay, you okay, fine? You right? It says be respectful be respectful of all re Go ahead, I'm sorry. She's You're being respectful. You okay, you okay over there? <laughs> it says be respectful of all residents regardless of their political affiliations. So everyone knows I'm a Republican. Is that what your issue is with me? Because you clearly have an issue with me. You don't bring anybody else's name up but mine. I want to work with all of you, whether on the council, off the council, I always have. And that is something that the three of you need to learn. You need to learn how to work with everyone. You lack the ability to do that. That is not how we move a town forward, and that is not how we heal. And this town has a lot of healing to do. And what I witnessed the three of you act before, you are incapable of assisting this town to heal. That's number one. Number two, the fact that the mayor is trying to find a solution with an ad hoc committee. Excuse me, Gloria, what are you saying about me? The fact that the mayor is trying to 
put together an ad hoc committee. If he feels that's going to help us with our litigation on January 22nd, because the gentleman in the back of the room, I think it's Mr. Steinhagen, right? No, sorry. He's a different one. Different guy, sorry. The attorney is Betty Padovano. Thank you very much. That attorney wants to beat us in court on January 22nd. Do you understand what that means? So why would you want to be an obstructionist to stop the mayor from trying to find any way possible to strengthen our case starting on January 22nd. That is outrageous to want to work against the borough's interests. And I will say to all of you, if something goes wrong on January 22nd, I will be holding the three of you responsible for what happens. Because besides this, and I'll be talking about it again at the regular meeting, what you put in your campaign, what you put in your campaign literature horrifically compromises the borough's positions. You chose politics and your self-serving interests with the 800 Sylvan matter to win a campaign and work against the borough's interests. Don't laugh at it. It's not funny. You're hysterical. I got that hysterical. You call me a racist, a sexist, a misogynist, and you got the nerve. I called you a racist? In, in yeah. your campaign literature. It's all over the So We're that racist. is... I, I you am... You talk about campaign stuff. No, I'm right. talking right now. I'm don't don't harass right. the residents, please. I'm not harassing you. Well, you kind of are. You kind of are. I'm just thinking Please, problem. some big quorum, but please. Okay. I'm allowed to laugh if I want, because that is just ridiculous. All right, what, 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 if you have to laugh, just leave then. We'll come back after you're done. Yeah. After you're done. I'm a happy person. Well, because you're, you're just making a joke out of yourself. No, you're, please, you're, you're come on. You're trying to intimidate me if I'm not speaking. All right, you stop, har stop harassing the residents. I'm not harassing you right now. You want me to get back to that? I um, was talking about the 800 Sylvan matter. Uh, you're bringing something up totally different. I was talking about the ad hoc committee, which is what the mayor and the council was talking about, the creation of an ad hoc committee. So um, I don't know why you're bringing up anything else. Uh, I, I just, it's disappointing to see that you think such serious matters are really that important they're not. Okay. Uh, anybody else from the public wishing to be heard? Seeing and hearing no one, I have a motion to close the public portion. One thing, Mayor. Hold on. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Thank you. Uh, before we go into close, we need to identify the gentleman who is going to attend for the first three items on close for the record because I don't know his name. It's Thomas Troutner. Can you spell that, please, Mayor? Thomas Troutner, T-R-A-U-T-N-E-R. -E Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, have a motion to go into closed session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please read into the record the appropriate language for our closed session? Resolution 18235, resolution authorizing closed session at meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act. Whereas the mayor and council of the borough of Inglewood Place have deemed it necessary to go into closed session to discuss certain confidential matters. And whereas the minutes of the closed session will remain confidential as permitted under the Open Public Meetings Act or shall be released when there is no further need for confidentiality as authorized by the borough attorney. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and council of the borough of Inglewood Place will go into closed session for the following matters as permitted under the Open Public Meetings Act and JS8 and colon 4 12. Pending litigation regarding borough of Inglewood Cliffs affordable housing, 800 Sylvan Avenue LLC versus borough of Inglewood Cliffs mayor, council, and planning board, builder's remedy lawsuit. 800 Sylvan Avenue LLC Planning Board Builder Suit to Challenge Planning Planning Board Denial. Number four, uh, Mira versus Burrow and Chaffee, Addendum to Settlement and Disability Retirement. Number five, Lav Lavery Docket uh, versus Burrow, Potential Settlement of L. Cohen Claim for Attorney Fees. And item number six, Attorney Client Advisory and Deliberations. Michael Chaffee and subordination disciplinary charges of November 20, 2017.
the Alcone, is that the catalog? Uh, could I have, we're still in caucus, everyone. Um, we're going to finish our caucus and then go to the regular meeting. Uh, welcome. Sorry we are running late. Uh, can I have a motion to come out of closed session, please? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> All right. Borough Council, would you like to add something? Yes. Uh, just for members of the public as well as for council members, please mark on your agendas that I will be adding to or making um, uh, wording to be included in the resol written resolutions. Number 237, appointment of co-counsel for the Affordable Housing and Ray Borough of Angela Crisp. I will be adding the information that will be included in the resolution. Uh, creation, uh, item number 240, creation of an affordable housing ad hoc committee. That's a resolution. I will be stating the contents of the resolution with um, uh, some uh, supplementary language. That's item 240. Item 249. I don't think we need to add anything, but the written resolution is not here. What the title says is what the written resolution will do. Approving and ratifying letter directly. With respect to item number 250, it is um, you have just deliberated pursuant to law on those charges and my understanding is that there will be a motion to accept the finding recommended by the hearing officer on the charge and that there will be a modification to the penalty recommended by the hearing officer to decrease it. I will state that when we come to it, there will be a motion in a second. Uh, with respect to item number 251, we made a change earlier. That will be authorizing the preparation and service, service of charges. Um, I will add to that before we do the vote, and then there will be a motion. Okay, thank you. Can I have a motion to adjourn the caucus? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Everybody ready for the regular meeting? Everybody good?